Hi, I'd like to talk about some objects in the outer part of the solar system, beyond Neptune, so-called trans-Neptunian objects, and those are Pluto, Eris, and the Kuiper Belt. And so uh, the story begins with Clyde Tombaugh, who discovered Pluto in 1930, and his method was to look at photographs through something called a blink comparator. And this took two photographs and a mirror, and you could switch a handle, uh, 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 like a knob, and turn it back and forth and switch so that as you viewed you, you could view one photograph and the other very quickly back and forth. And what this meant was that any objects that were exactly the same in one photograph at, compared to the other would not change, but any object that moved from one picture to the other, which in this case would mean uh, an object moving in an orbit around the sun, yeah, we could be a planet. And so uh, uh, Clyde Tombaugh looked at lots of many, many, many plates across the sky, uh, didn't have really any idea where to look particularly, but looked through a, a large number of these and found Pluto uh, through this method. And so um, this is or beginning because Pluto it was found to be beyond Neptune. If we look at more recent photograph of Pluto, we see that there are some moons, and Pluto has five moons. It has one large moon, Charon, and here are two other moons, Nix and Hydra. These are taken with the Hubble Space Telescope, but also at the same, uh, the same time, more or less, over a period of uh, a couple of decades in Hawaii, the telescopes in Hawaii were used to uh, observe new objects and look for new objects in the, starting in about 1990s and moving into the uh, 2000s. And most significantly was this, and we can see this is a modern version of a blink comparator the uh, uh, computer image of this region is taken at uh, two, three, I think three different times here, and we see an object that is clearly moving in three different positions in three different times. Nothing else is changing, and so this object is moving by the brightness of it. They were able to estimate that it uh, is indeed larger than Pluto, and uh, it's called Eris, and it was discovered in 2003 by Mike Brown and colleagues. And Eris turns out to be the largest uh, 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 object that is not a planet or one of the seven large moons. So there's eight planets, seven large moons, that's 15 objects. Eris is the 16th largest object known in the solar system, and it has a very uh, eccentric orbit and very far out into the solar system. It, on average, it is three times further than Pluto in its orbit. It's also inclined uh, very highly to the orbital plane of the solar system, not only that, but also of Pluto's orbit. And uh, so, in fact, there are many objects, and we call this the Kuiper Belt, starting in the 1990s. Objects were discovered, and we now uh, have uh, thousands, many thousands of objects have been discovered in the Kuiper Belt and it's estimated that there are 100,000 objects of a pretty significant size um, uh, in the Kuiper Belt and 
even billions of smaller objects down to the size of, say, uh, one kilometer. So uh, there's this vast region out there of objects that are icy, frozen objects, and uh, Eris and Pluto are just the tip of the iceberg. They are just the biggest ones. Here we see a similar diagram. Now this is just a, a diagram illustrating uh, uh, artist's conception of this Kuiper belt and a um, trip that the New Horizons spacecraft went. This is an actual photograph I showed before of Pluto and Charon and other small moons of Pluto. And this spacecraft flew by Pluto in July 2015. It was launched in 2006 and used Jupiter as a gravity assist in 2007. It's on its way out. It's going to go by a Kuiper Belt object in the next coming years. So what did they find? The New Horizons spacecraft actually uh, made very interesting discoveries of Pluto. Here is an artist's conception of the spacecraft. This is an actual photograph of Pluto showing a vast difference in color of terrain. This kind of neat heart shape was named after Clyde Tombaugh and many other features have been um, uh, viewed and, and named and also here on the moon was also observed. We can see a, just a size comparison between the two using images from New Horizons. The other small moons, well, Charon is huge compared to the other Styx, Nix, uh, Kerberos, and Hydra. And notice these are not uh, in all spherical moons. None of them are round. Whereas Pluto and Charon are definitely larger and round. The surface of Pluto has very young or new geological features. There is apparently a lot of convection of methane underneath the surface and regions here show that and, um, and very complex terrain. And this is sort of the interface between the light here and the darker terrain. Um, and the methane ice is considered to be the, the a very common feature on the surface, very common constituent. Uh, uh, Charon, well, has very interesting properties. It has this dark air polar region and, uh, and very interesting biochemistry is thinking that, um, that these are organic compounds here that have been processed with the sunlight. It's, and, but there's a lot of other regions. There's a more older kind of surface with more heavily cratered fault regions. Uh, Charon turns out to be a very interesting object in its own right. So here's a closer up view, variety of surface features there. And if we look at, these are a composite of photographs taken of other objects we have Maki Maki and Humea. Here's Ceres. Ceres is the dwarf planet in the asteroid belt, as well as Eris and Pluto, Eris being the largest of the all the dwarf planets. Eris has a moon called Dysonomia. So these uh, dwarf planets are all shown here on scale with the Earth. Beyond the Oort cloud, we have the, uh, sorry, beyond the Kuiper Belt, we have the Oort Cloud. The Kuiper Belt extends out from about the orbit of Neptune, or a little bit closer, about 30 AU, out to about 1,000 AU. The Oort Cloud extends from about 5,000 AU all the way to 100,000 AU, and um, it's a huge group of 
nuclei, we think of them as the cometary nuclei. So these, this is the source of the comets that come many times into the inner part of the solar system and stay on a few orbits, uh, maybe a few hundred orbits, and burn out. These uh, probably originate way out here in the Oort cloud, well, up to about, um, even up to 100,000 AU from the sun. So that uh, concludes.